my girlfriend was like, oh, there is this cool old game I used to play when I was younger. We should play it together and then you can cover it on your channel. All right, so here's a game show first. I'm playing with my girlfriend and here we go with Shivers. Shivers is a 1995 point and click adventure game from Sierra Online. The opening FMV shows us that we are a teenager who's been dared to spend the night in the spooky haunted museum at the top of the hill. After your dickhead mates drive off and leave you there, it's up to you to solve that first puzzle to break into the museum. In doing so, you find out that 15 years ago, another two teenagers broke into this museum and died. Oh good. Nothing's given to you right off the bat. You've got really no idea what you're doing. Right from the start, the whole of Professor Windlenot's Museum of the Strange and Unusual is given to you to explore, and you've got one endless night in which to explore it. By looking around Professor Windlenot's bizarre cacophony of mysteries, you eventually stumble into the main objective of the game. As I previously mentioned, 15 years prior, two teenagers broke into the museum, but they accidentally opened nine clay pots each one containing an IRL, real life, evil spirits. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, why stop at one, right? Just, just open the lot up, you fucking morons. Anyway, these spirits are called the Exupi, and they then suck the life out of those stupid teenagers, and unfortunately, the professor as well. Since then, the museum has been condemned, no one's been allowed in it, and it's been left up on top of that hill to rot until you showed up. As you're looking around Wunderknot's museum, you find out that actually it was a bit of a tragic bloke. Laughed out of the scientific community for his obsession with pseudo-scientific rubbish like ancient aliens and spooky ghosts, Atlantis, the Hollow Earth theory, all that stuff. Turning his back on the snooty establishment, Windlenot decides to do what every mental person in history has ever done and spend his entire family fortune on building a mental collection of crazy rubbish from around the world. Turns out though, some of this rubbish is true. Sadly though, the only place that contains proof that all these things are real is this condemned old museum that no one's ever going to go to. Lucky for you though, by collecting it all together, Windonaut has given you all the information you need to trap the Exupi and save the day. To be fair, for 1995, I cannot knock shivers for story and setting. Sierra Online never shied away from horror or grisly stuff in their games, and shivers fits pretty well into their early 90s horror catalogue. The spooky museum is actually fairly spooky. It's kind of 90s goosebumps atmosphere rather than compared to something more modern like Soma, but nevertheless, I cannot fault the presentation. The game is an adventure game, but it plays out in first person, so it's a bit like Myst or Seventh Guest. If you've not played either of those games, then essentially you're clicking on screen to, to move around. You click to move forwards, you click to turn around, and when you think about it, it's perfect for jump scares, really. It feels primitive, to be honest. It's not something I've ever really liked, but objectively, it doesn't negatively impact the game. This is one of the things that I think I can remember most about Shivers now. It's certainly the thing that the missus remembers the most, and so making it a memorable and a different PC game, then fair play. As I was playing Shivers, I did say at the time that I was struck by just how much work it would have been to make this game. I looked it up, and Shivers contains over two and a half thousand hand-drawn paintings that have been scanned in, they've been digitally you know, photoshopped over the top of. There's also I mean, more digital painting, there's blue screened actors, chroma keying, CGI, 3D modelling. You can't knock the work that Sierra put into Shivers. Considering that this game is running in 640 by 480, they're cramming a lot into those pixels. Whilst we are on the positives, the sound of music in Shivers was well received at the time and for good reason. Taking advantage of that CD-ROM format, the music in Shivers is probably one of the best things about it. All sound and music was undertaken by just one bloke, Guy Whitmore. Now, he went on to make the music for the Blood Games and for No One Lives Forever. And some of the creepier music was genuinely spooking us out. The corridor theme, whilst kind of goofy nowadays, is a proper earworm. We both now still walk around our house just going, oh, 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 welcome, welcome. Aside from all that good stuff, unfortunately, the area that the Shivers game starts to fall down is the game. Everything up until this point has been good, but the game is kind of awful. If it was two and a half thousand images, it would probably just be wicked. 
The museum is like a maze, and moving around it gets tedious after a while. You've got to revisit and backtrack to the same old places time and again, and it's not like you can waz your way around, you know, you're, you're just clicking 500 million times. Now, I did say before that objectively that missed style doesn't ruin the game, but you are just more aware of the backtracking when you're just clicking on the mouse non-stop. Also, the puzzles are bullshit. Some of them are logical. At the very least, you can figure them out from playing them. But the organ, the harp, those two music-based puzzles are absolute garbage. Admittedly, not all the puzzles are like this. In fact, some of them are so good that Resident Evil 3 copied them. So, you know what? There is good in here. I'm not being completely negative. But even the smallest nugget of poo will ruin even the biggest bowl of ice cream. And the fact that you can only carry one or two inventory items does great on you. To trap the Exupi, you need to find the pots that the teenagers opened 15 years ago. Now that is the right pot and the right lid for the right Exupi. If you have the right pot but the wrong lid, then you have to choose which one that you want to carry around. The locations of the pots, the lids and the Exupi is all random, so you've got no clear direction really at any point in the game. The Exupi also move around the museum, so once you've finally found the right pot and the right lid, you're still clicking about the place just trying to find the right bloody ghost. And once you've finally caught that ghost, the process starts again. Nine times you've got to do this. This is easily one of, if not the most tedious gameplay loops I've ever played in a game. It's not about hating on old games. It's not what I'm about. I like having to take notes physically in a notepad. I like having to draw little maps. That's part of the old school gaming experience. I get it. But the randomness of this game, twinned with the tedium of just clicking around the place, that combination, it just got too much for us. If you want to play Shivers, it's not available on GOG or Steam. Shivers is complete abandonware. You'll need to track down a physical copy like we did. You could probably find it on abandonware websites, but then again, I imagine that you would need an old PC to run it on. In closing, the missus enjoyed Shivers for the nostalgia. We enjoyed playing a PC game together, and it was fun for me to play a game that I'd never even heard of, let alone played before. If you're new to adventure games, then there is two dozen games that I can recommend before you play this. If, however, though, you've played all the usual suspects and you're looking for something spooky, then fill your boots. Just get ready to be clicking on that mouse. Thank you very much for watching. For more old PC gaming videos, please subscribe to The Game Show.